Live from San Francisco, California, it's The Cube at VMworld 2014, brought to you by VMware, Cisco, EMC, HP, and Nutanix. Good morning from San Francisco, everybody. This is Dave Vellante, and this is theCUBE. We're here at VMworld 2014. Rob Commons is here. He's the Vice President of Marketing at, at Tegile, a company that's doing hybrid arrays. Hybrid arrays are sort of a combination of flash and, and spinning disk, although Tegile has a little different point of view on that. Rob, great to see you. Welcome to theCUBE. Hey, good to see you, Dave. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks for coming on. So uh, let's start with, uh, with, with VMworld. What's going on here? Huge show, 20,000 plus customers. It's, it's kind of the kick. It used to be Labor Day kicked off the sort of fall selling season. Now it's VMworld. You know, the kids are back at school. But, right, uh, right. So give us the update on what you guys are doing here at VMworld. Yeah, so this is our third year at VMworld. We're having a great time. We've got a big booth right front and center, right in the show. And um, people are uh, actually in the booth, they're, uh, playing a game of chance to win a uh, 2014 Tesla Model S, so that's a lot of fun. People wrapped around the entire booth all week long, so we're having fun. Customers only. That's right, <laughs> yep, yep. We have to sign an agreement. No, no employees or contractors can win that, but that's okay. But what we're having a lot of more fun doing is actually demonstrating our, uh, the extensibility of our technology. You mentioned hybrid. We actually do all flash and hybrid, but we're also playing with the model and actually knocking a lot of guys on their heels by saying, Hybrid's not really just flash and disk. It's really, if you back up one layer from that, it's a performance layer and a capacity layer. And what we're demonstrating downstairs is performance with very, very fast flash, and then a capacity layer of a, a lower class of flash, I like to call cheap and deep flash. So it resolves that tension that's always been there between performance and capacity. So the day has arrived, we're now talking about cheap and deep flash. I'm very happy actually, right? right? So, but you know, you actually said, well, we're not just hybrid, we actually do all flash, but in my experience, it's very rare that sort of one size can fit all right, in, right. in the industry. I mean, the closest example of that is NetApp with Waffle. Sure. And even that, you can see, it's just, you know, it can only go so, so high and can yeah. only go so low. So, yeah. I want you to talk about the hybrid concept and, and, and why it's all of a sudden you know, caught on and is, is sort of ascending very rapidly. Yeah, if you look at the numbers, the, uh, the, the addressable market for hybrid versus all flash is about eight times bigger than all flash, but all flash is kind of neat and people like talking about it, but being able to very, very, I'll call it pragmatically approach that tension between performance and capacity with hybrid, what we do is we create a performance layer that's treated not as a tier of storage, but as a cache. So things are happening in real time. I'll, uh, the easiest example to talk about is, for example, in virtual desktop, when you have a boot storm, that boot storm usually happens within about a 90 minute window in the morning. If you're using sub-volume tiering, which a lot of the tra traditional storage guys do, that happens once or twice a day. And by that time, that boot storm's long gone. So it, the, yeah. the, eight, eight to nine thirty, people right. <laughs> hit their email. Right, boom. exactly. <laughs> yeah, you can't wait till two in the morning for the auto tiering algorithms to kick in. You got to, you got to be right here, right now. And then, with inline data reduction, with deduplication and compression, not only does that drop the capacity of the storage system, but it actually has a force multiplier on the, that cache. So if we get on average, let's say a five to one data reduction rate, I may have a hybrid array that's got two terabytes of very high performance flash in the front end, the host thinks it has 10 terabytes of flash. So the cache hit ratios go up, everybody's performance goes up, and on average we see about a 96% cache hit ratio. So 96% of the time, you're getting a flash class experience to the end user. Only 4% of the time you're dipping down into, into the, uh, the cheaper and deeper layer. Yeah, so you saw that sort of so-called auto tiering hit the market. Actually, Compellent kind of right. early on you right. know, came up with, they were the first, and then, and, and then others you know, hopped in. Essentially, what I'm hearing from you is, good idea for the time, but it was essentially a band-aid. Right. That it's got to be more real time. Right, I think, I think what's happening is virtualization is driving so much 
what I'll call consolidation and multi-tenancy, that these applications are, are moving so fast. It's funny, we, we, our company's called Tagile, technology and agile, and we put those two words in a box and shook it real hard, and that, that's how we came up with the name of the company. But the agility and the, the, the velocity of, of these applications moving around, it, it wants a, a real-time cache versus a sub-volume tier that's moving around once or twice a day. Well, let's, let's come back to cost a little bit because um, we seem to be at the point now, that tipping point that everybody's yeah. been waiting for. Uh, in some cases, you know, people are saying, okay, flash is cheaper than spinning disk, and it, and it pro certainly probably is at the you know, 15K RPM. That's sort right. of a dead market now, right? Because right. flash is cheaper. You know, where are we? How close are we? I have we hit that tipping point? What's your point of view? Yeah, it's kind of interesting, and it really depends on the customer's applications and how, how latency sensitive are their applications. So the, the people that have gone all flash and have kind of taken what I call a religious stance that way, they, they use those data reduction technologies, deduplication and compression to drop the cost of flash. But what they're not doing is applying the same algorithms to disk. Whereas at Tagile, we use deduplication and compression to drop the cost of flash, but we do the same thing to disk. So that gap is always there. So we can get down to well below a dollar a gigabyte with a hybrid system, whereas a typical all flash double. is at least double, if not four yeah. or five times that. Yeah, yeah, right. They're just starting to get down to, to so the two, that's, that's sort of the new benchmark, right? That's right. So, so the, the low right. watermark for them is, is, is double. Yeah. Okay, but now, so people would say, all right, but you're applying sort of the data reduction technologies to spinning disk, that causes performance overheads. How do you deal with that? Actually, what's really exciting about this is, I mentioned that force multiplier effect. Mm. So when we give a 5x boost to the cache, that makes things typically seven to 10 times faster than a traditional storage system, if you look at the deduplication performance cost, it's only about three or 4%. So if I'm giving you 700% more performance, that three or 4% really doesn't matter. Mm. Okay, and because then people will take the cost savings every time. Right. Um, you gave a talk recently at the Flash Memory Summit in August, actually this month. Right. Uh, well, give us an update. How was the Flash Memory Summit? We were talking a little bit off camera about it, but it seems to be coming along and the industry's getting together. It's kind of an industry love fest, I know, yeah. but, <laughs> but there's a lot of innovation going on and that's sort of underscored at this event, right? Yeah, I, I think what you're seeing is people have been talking about Flash versus Disk is kind of almost what I'll call a binary event. You have Disk and you have Flash, but you're starting to see the Flash market starting to bifurcate a little bit and you've got super high performance flash, and like the term I like to use, cheap and deep flash, and it's starting to segment, and people are starting to wrestle around with what are the issues, what are the challenges, what are the opportunities by leveraging different classes of flash. Now we're very excited about, for example, TLC media for cheap and deep, mm. and then up on top in the performance layer, things like NVMe, PCIe right. storage, we can put that in our architecture as the performance layer and the capacity layer and really keep moving the needle really well, both on performance and capacity. So you're saying your architecture is media agnostic, is that right? Yeah, yeah. You, you so know. we like to call it extensible, where we know that over time there's going to be better storage for dollars per gigabyte and dollars per IOP. And we'll keep riding that technology curve and letting our, our caching algorithms resolve that tension between the two without driving a lot of user intervention. So it's all essentially automated. Rob, I want to ask you, so you, you've been in the storage business for a long time and you, you've seen uh, you know, a, lot of, a lot of companies come and go and trends sure. and so forth. I like to refer to the big whales as the cartel. <laughs> <laughs> the you oligarchs, the, you yeah. You got the oligarchs, right. So why can't the oligarchs sort of compete more effectively in this space? They've got you know, huge resources, sure. they've got big product lines. Mm -hmm. um, are, are they just sort of hanging on to their, their, their existing systems to try to get as much as they can out of non-recurring you know, non engineering cost? Um, are they trying to build these types of architectures? Is it just, does it have to be built from the ground up? You know, coming from you know, right. your background, you understand these issues. Help us understand why they can't just sort of say, okay, let's take our existing architecture and right. you know, redo it. Yeah, if you, if you look at the, what I'll call the, the big guys, you call the cartel, <laughs> they, their systems were architected really around the old client server model where customers deployed an application sitting on a network, sitting on a storage system. But now with virtualization, with the, the, the the multi-tenancy and this IO blender effect that happens, and now we have Flash on the other side pushing the model. Those systems were built around a disk drive architecture, 
and to put Flash into the model um, from the ground up and then the, the effect of virtualization from the top, they're just simply not built for that. And to re-architect an existing system to accommodate those things is incredibly hard. It's, e it's much easier and that's why you see so much velocity from new storage companies like Tejal taking so much market so fast because we're, we're able to actually put the disk architecture to the side and optimize for a virtualized flash-centric model that we live in today. And that's all code. Right, it's right. all that's, software. That's why it takes so right. long. Right. Uh, talk about the channel, a little bit of time here left. Uh, you guys right. are 100% channel company. Um, there's a real land grab going on in, there is. In, in the channel. I wonder if you could talk about uh, the channel, your relationship with the channel, and, and why you're doing well there. Yep, so we, we've got a really nice model. We're 100% channel. Um, being a relatively new company, well, um, I like to say we have all the NFL cities here in, in the United States covered. We're growing uh, very fast in uh, Europe as well. UK, Benelux, the Nordics, Italy. We're doing really well there as well. We're starting to uh, APAC as well. Um, and we have a, a neat model that the channel really likes in which we have this thing called deal registration where if a, if a channel partner registers an opportunity with us, not only are they protected with very nice gross margin protection for that initial deal, but we, are, we call it a persistent registration in which for the entire service life of that system in that company, they are protected gross margin wise to sell additional systems, upgrade, scale up, or scale out that system over that three or five year service life. So your deal reg is not just a one shot deal where you're basically head faking them saying, okay, thanks for the, you know, right. the new business, but the renewal stuff is right. uh, all ours. It's uh, a long term gonna... relationship. And we have people that actually are, they work with the customers to, to optimize performance and capacity over the service life of the array, grow it with new applications, maybe they're adding a database or a virtual desktop infrastructure. We'll come back and, and we'll actually award that business right to the channel partner. And, but we're doing a lot of the groundwork ourselves. Are you seeing specialization in the channel, particularly around you know, workloads, whether it's Microsoft or VDI or, or VMware, uh, or is it still largely sort of a box selling mentality? Well, there's, there's really two sides of the market. We, we see a lot of the, the box movers, and they, they do a good job. We love them. That's great. That's <laughs> right. fantastic. Thank you Move very some much. some gear. <laughs> <laughs> but there, you, and you, you actually hit the nail on the head. There's three primary application areas that we sell into extremely well. Um, virtual server consolidation, virtual desktop, and then a database consolidation. And what's fun with the, uh, the two on the, uh, that I mentioned, virtual server and virtual desktop, mm. the way that the uh, software oligarchs, we're talking about the hardware oligarchs, but the, the software oligarchs, the way they sell their software is by CPU core. Yeah. But what we're finding is what I like to call the, uh, the laptop effect. We've all opened up our laptop and you fire up Excel, you fire up your, your email application, and every so often, the thing just sits there and you can see the disk drive blinking away and you go, oh geez, I got to go gra grab a cup of coffee while I'm waiting for the thing to, to, to come back. What's happening is the CPU and memory are out of resource and it's using the disk in the laptop as an extension of resource. What we do is we actually work with our customers to actually force their VM hypervisor or database software into that situation. When they reach out to disk, it's coming to from flash, so it's still fast. You don't have that, that drag like we do on our laptops. And when we do that, we're actually dropping the number of CPU cores that the hypervisor and the database are running on, and that saves the customer an incredible amount of money. For example, Oracle Enterprise Database, before you put an application on top of it, it's $75,000 per CPU core. So we have customers are buying $100,000 arrays and dropping four or five CPU cores right out of their database and saving $300,000, $400,000 right. right now. Times, yeah, because uh, uh, multiply by another 1.18 for maintenance. That's right. Uh, so, excellent, all right Rob, we're out of time, that's great. Uh, last, last question, uh, you, uh, the bumper sticker on, on VMworld 2014, so Tejal, you're, you're really starting to, to get traction. You mentioned your international expansion, that's great product suite is coming right. together, you're building out the channel, so what's the bumper sticker on, the, on VMworld 2014 for you guys? Yeah, we like to call it no compromise. And by, what we mean by that is we give customers the flexibility of choice. All flash, hybrid, block, file, deduplication and compression, remote replication and local snapshot. It's a full bench 
and it's all included in the same single price. All right, Rob, you sound excited, and uh, I really appreciate you coming on theCUBE. It's great to see you again. Thanks, Dave, appreciate all right, it. Take care. Keep all it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE. We're live from VMworld 2014. We'll be right back.